Sadly, fatal drownings of young children like this are all too common in our country. In fact, drowning is the number one cause of death for children ages one to four. Not gun violence, cancer, or other accidents, it's drownings. And for children five to 14, it's the second cause of death by unintentional injury after car crashes. So what can be done to help protect children from one of the biggest threats to their safety? It's an important question and it's timely with May being Drowning Prevention Month. Joining us now to talk about it is Alan Korn, Executive Director of Abby's Hope Charitable Foundation. For three decades, he's been working in the area of child safety. Alan, good to have you here. We don't know the exact details yet of what happened to Aria Barrett, but you talk about layers of protection as a way to keep kids safe from drowning. Can you break it down for us? What are they? Right, you're, you're absolutely right, Elizabeth. We don't know what happened at that particular incident in Florida, but custom tells us, history tells us, that these type of injuries happen when there's a breakdown in the layers of protection. And one of the first components is if you have a backyard pool, uh, residential pool, you need to, and young children who either frequent the pool or live in the home in which the resident uh, has the pool, you want to make sure there's a barrier between the home and the pool itself. Not just a barrier around the perimeter of the pool to keep neighbors out of the pool, but also some kind of barrier, a four foot fence right. that can run between so the house and the So a child can't just pool. walk out the back door and into the pool like there has to if the, the entire pool needs to be surrounded by a fence in other words right and and, and life happens you you spend an afternoon at a pool uh, kids are enjoying themselves and we want kids to enjoy their pool it's a wonderful a feature in a home uh, but then you go back inside parents are doing laundry they're doing uh, cooking dinner and a toddler runs out the back of the home and a tragedy can happen I don't know that what what's happened here but that certainly is the way it has happened regularly and you maintain also that if you have a pool you need to learn CPR and how to resuscitate somebody who's been underwater yeah that's right that's another of the layers of protection as you get up the continuum swim lessons teaching kids to swim is important and then you want the right kind of response if a tragedy or near tragedy happens you can respond and you can learn bystander CPR that's not the full coat the full course, that's just a portion of it, mm -hmm. but it can save a child life. And I love this fact, during the course of your lifetime, uh, there's a 25% chance you're gonna share space with someone that's gonna need CPR, so, uh, including drownings. Wow. So you wanna make sure, you wanna make sure you're ready to go when and if that happens. Hasn't happened to me yet, but 25% chance. Me neither. Um, anyway, uh, what's the best age for kids to learn to swim? I know that I have two children, and I actually, my youngest son learned to swim before he could walk. Yeah, and in fact, that's basically the general rule. Once your child starts to learn how to walk, you want to start getting them into some form of swim lessons. And you've seen them. It's probably what you did. There's mommy and me, daddy and me exactly. classes to get kids for, you know, comfortable in the water. And then as they get older, you start progressing towards the actual learning how to swim. I'll note this, Elizabeth, that unlike chess or, you know, field hockey or football, uh, this is a uh, not just a life skill, it's a life-saving skill. Mm -hmm. So really all kids should learn how to swim early on in their life. And you say that COVID actually led to a rise in drownings. Um, now yeah. that the pandemic yeah. is over, are we seeing a decrease in the number or is it still elevated? We don't know uh, yet because the number, the scientific numbers aren't in yet. I monitor the news. This type of thing that happened in Tampa over the weekend happens almost every single day and that's because we're you know it's, it's hotter in the summers now during covid people were at home kids weren't at school one of the interesting components on this is parents are working at home now they're distracted uh they're on their zoom calls their uh, telephone conferences working the business right and if you've got a pool in your backyard that's when distractions happen and a toddler can wander off Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.